Hello everyone, Nadlov here. Today we're going to be making this very simple mouse movement a controller in the Godot game engine version 3.2.2 stable and let's get right into it. So right off the bat you can see I have a game scene which is just an empty no 2D uh, followed by an instance player scene and the way I instanced that scene was going up here to the chain and I just clicked the player. I'm not going to do that because I already have it. And the way I got my instance scene is that I went over here to the plus sign, I made a new scene, I added a kinematic body 2D as the root node, I attached a default Godot sprite for ease of use, and the code for this is very simple. We only need four things. A variable for velocity, which is going to be equal to speed multiplied by direction, and optionally you can include delta. I did it just for the tutorial because it's just a very easy way to make your code run at the same speed on all computers. There will be a future video explaining this in much greater detail. Anyway, and our velocity vector, which is a product of these three things over here, or two things depending on whatever you want, is going to be passed inside of the move and slide function, which is a function given to the kinematic body 2D node. And I'll just show you. If I hop over into my uh, search help up here, search help, if I just hop over there and I control F, uh, move and slide, there we go. You can see it's also over here, move and slide. And yeah, that's a lot. And yeah, that's a lot of text for such a small function, but it's really what allows Godot to be so powerful. You don't have to write the code for this, you just have to use it. And we're actually going to be setting the velocity equal to the result of this, which is detailed over here, that it just returns a linear velocity. The reason we're doing this is because it just helps our code run a little bit smoother and it helps the um, actual movement be smoother overall. And then, of course, we're going to be printing our velocity so we can see this. You don't need to include this line. I just put it so you can see uh, di um, a special difference between these two lines of code over here in the future. And you're probably wondering, okay, so that's amazing, but I noticed that this dir over here, dir is short for direction, is blue and it's followed by parentheses. Why is that? Well, it's because dir is actually a function. You can see over here that we have function dir, or f-u-n-c func, which is short form for function, dir, brackets, arrow, vector2. What does this mean? This looks like gibberish. This means that there's going to be a function called direction, which is going to return a vector2. What does that mean? It means that when we call this function, it's going to produce a vector2 which we can use. Okay, so that makes sense. So we're going to make a temporary variable called direction, and I'm purposely doing this because you can use similar names if you want, but this, whatever you call this doesn't matter. Like I could name this this, right? And I can put this everywhere in my code, and it will still work. As you can see, I'm running this exact same code, and it's still working. It doesn't matter what you call it, I just called it dir because it makes the most sense to call a direction dir, for me, at least. So after we declare a variable, we're going to make sure that we give it the type of vector2. We're going to be setting our direction variable equal to the global mouse position subtracted by the global position of our kinematic body 2D. And we're going to do dot floor. I'll explain this. Over here in paint, I've just uh, set up what that means. When we do get global mouse position, in fact, I'll actually show you. Over here, if I do, instead of this, I do get underscore global mouse position, I run the scene, you can see that the closer I am to the top point over here, it becomes closer to zero, zero. This is important because the way Godot calculates vectors is from the top left of your frame. And because I'm doing zero, zero, uh, so the first point of the vector is at zero, zero, and the second point is where the mouse is. This uh, white triangle represents the mouse. Then over here we have a, a global position. Global position means it will get the global position of our player at the moment in time whenever this function is called which is every frame so every frame we're going to be getting the global position of our player and that will be represented by this blue vector over here because Godot is also blue and then we're going to subtract them as you can see sorry I'm jumping around a lot we're going to be subtracting them now I'll explain what does subtracting mean well when we subtract something as when we subtract vectors not something when we subtract vectors we actually take the first vector, you can see this is the first vector we're uh, getting reference to, or the values we're getting reference to, first vector. Then we go over there to our second vector, and before we go to our second vector, we want to make sure we draw the arrowhead of our first vector. So this is the arrow, this is the direction it's going in. So from 0, 0 to the mouse position, that's the direction of the vector. Then over here, we go to our line tool, and we just say this is the second vector, the blue one. And we're going to align this, so if this is the tail and this is the head, this is the tail, this is the head, 
we're going to make sure that the head of the first vector matches the tail of the second vector. Now there's one small thing I forgot to mention. When we subtract vectors, we actually flip this vector around. So if the arrow is going to be over here, over here, it's now going to be over here on this side. So we can actually put the tail of the second vector to the head of the first one, which also means we can put the head of the first vector to the tail of the second one, and we get something like this. It will not be complete if I do not draw these. And now, for the final touches, we're going to be making our resultant, because the a vector basically says that we're going to go from here to here, and that's our resultant vector. Now, if I take this green line, you can see it matches perfectly with this. And because we did something like this from here to here, the actual direction of this vector is like this. So if I put that same arrowhead over here, that messy arrowhead over here, you can see that this sprite should then move in this direction towards the mouse. And that's how this line works. Now the reason we're using dot floor over here is because if we look inside the documentation, you can see the floor function just rounds down your value. So I'll just show you what happens if we use the, the floor function. What happens is we get something like this. You see that these are all whole numbers. And when I, it goes near my mouse, oops, not my bad. See, this is one thing I, um, this is really important that I show you guys this, that when you're programming, you're going to encounter problems. And you might even encounter problems in the output statement over there. And you should be able to solve these. You can see that when we do that, we're able to get to zero very quickly, right? Well, it like takes maybe one to two seconds to get to zero. But if we do not do dot floor, in fact, if we get rid of it and I run the scene again, you can see that we get, it takes like way more than two seconds to get to zero, zero. And right now the computer is still processing all those numbers. So it's just easier if you do dot floor. See, it's still going over there. If we just do dot floor and we get our very simple, smooth movement to our mouse. And if I just full screen this, and you can see it's kind of fast, right? But let's say you wanted to make sure your Godot uh, player moves at a certain speed. What we can then do, what we can then do is we can, after these uh, parentheses, after the dot floor, we can say dot clamped. This value can just be the speed at which you want your Godot uh, player to move. So if I do something like 10, of course it'll move very, very slowly. And you can see, you can see it's moving very, very slowly. Now, what does this mean for vector maths? Well, it actually means that, and I'm actually going to be using this yellow color over here to demonstrate, well, that when we do a dot clamped, it actually means that the value of that vector is going to be clamped to a value. I know this is a little bit longer than it should be, but I really wanted to get the fundamentals down for any new Godot um, user. So yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. And of course, the um, source code is in is on GitHub. Uh, link in the description below. And that's all I have to say for this video. Have an amazing day.